Call to order the February 9th, 2015 Latrobe City Council meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask for a moment of silence to give thanks, to ask for guidance, or to just quietly relax. Thank you. I have approval of the minutes for the January 12, 2015 meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped roll call. Sorry, roll call, please. Mr. Duvinangelo? Here. Mrs. Smith? Here. Mr. Gonzalez? Here. Mr. Gonzalez? Here. Mr. Baldwin? 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 Here. Now we have approval of the minutes from the January 12, 2015 meeting. I move the minutes of the January 12, 2015 meeting be approved and accepted and be permitted to remain on the secretary's desk where they will be available for reading <coughs> and inspection to anyone. May I have a second, please? I second that motion. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. May I have approval of the fiscal department reports and pay bills for the month of January 2015? I'll make a motion. I need a second. I'll second that. Any questions or discussions? Since Mike's not here, I'll ask Mike's question. Barb, is there anything unusual? <laughs> oh, Jerry, I'm sorry. I'll defer to. Is there anything out of no, budget or there? I'm sorry, what did you say? There is not? There, no, there is not. Okay, so when Mike Sapor is watching this video tonight when he gets home, he'll know that we asked. Okay, um, at this time, it's citizens request to discuss any items that are on the agenda. So if anyone has any uh, questions about item agendas, yes? Oh, were you just waving, John? Just waving. Yes, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I thought you wanted to say something. I was saying a little wave. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any citizens request to deal with items that are on the agenda? Again, we'll have time at the end of the meeting to discuss any open items that you'd like to discuss. But any agenda items, please go to the microphone and state your name and address. Last call. Okay, moving on. Um, <clears throat> committee reports, finance, Madeline, do you have anything? No, nothing this evening. Public safety, Julie or Jerry? Neighborhood watch meeting, March 2nd, 6.30. <clears throat> uh, we're going to be stuffing bags. We have various uh, information packets that we're going to be stuffing in bags and hopefully going door to door and giving them the, I think everybody in the city, I'm not sure how many Jim has. So we can use uh, members and we can use people help stuff. So March 6th, 30 here. March 2nd, 6:30. Um, personnel committee. Um, neither of them are here. Um, I just, I just, I will update you briefly that the, the civil service is in the process of um, filling positions that we have. Jim, do you yes. want to? Yes. Update us on that. Yes, the written written test is completed. All the veteran education points are added and we have um, eight people have passed their rank one through eight and we'll interview the top three uh, for, for a position. Okay, thank you. Public Works, Madeline or Jerry? Yeah. Any 
not about community development. Okay. Board and authority reports. I have asked Jared Tronzo from um, the Latrobe Revitalization Committee to come to this meeting today and just give us a brief update about what revitalization is um, up to. Sure. So thank you, Jared. You're welcome. There you go. There is a lot of really good things going on with the Revitalization Committee, um, and um, if, if we are one shortcoming it's probably we're, we're not doing a real good job maybe of, of getting our message out there we're trying but it's not easy so um i thought this might be a good way for at least everyone on council and the residents that are here tonight to get a snapshot of, of some of the things that are going on did you bring any extras of these for the i do okay uh, anybody wants some we're running the end in groups of and would you mind like passing those out to the residents thanks <clears throat> mm. okay so what I try to do here is um, put numerical um, sort of sequence this is paint a picture of what we're talking about. This isn't comprehensive, but it's a snapshot of a couple of projects we've wrapped up recently, and uh, also paints a picture of some things that are coming. Um, 1A and um, first and second columns, you'll see some of our uh, facades. What we have is a four-point approach. We are a, a nationally accredited uh, Main Street program in 501c3, so that four approach is through promotions, economic restructuring, organization and design and facade so <clears throat> these are a product of the design and facade committee we still offer a dollar for dollar matching grant up to five thousand dollars for um, the core downtown businesses um, so you see some of the ones we've wrapped up recently and uh, the bottom middle right uh, you'll see Mullen and the Latanzio building uh, we are tentatively scheduled to do uh, two significant facade renovations there um, so that's exciting. Uh, it looks like the first phase of uh, Latanzio slash uh, Dance Land, Club Ice, whatever you call it, um, should begin in March. Uh, so uh, we're excited to start that. Uh, 2A, we went to uh, Weldon and Main Street, uh, the Ligonier uh, elderly home. We replaced about seven street trees. I uh, found they were dying back-to-back uh, -back plantings because they were planted actually in modified stone and not soil so we replaced all of that with seven proper street trees uh, it was no charge to them we were able to fundraise it um, also on two bait uh, by the medicine shop if you see the bottom right uh, those trees have fire blight we're not looking to increase the number of trees in any of these areas is basically to replace the ones that are dying and spreading disease so i just want to add um you know we've had in the past issues with trees but um, we've done a lot of research. Jared, do you want to talk a little bit about the trees that were the kind of trees they're specially yeah. designed to not tear up concrete and all that stuff? Part of our committee, we went through uh, the, the tree vitalized training. We have retired arborists and landscape architects that volunteer their time. Uh, Jim Walters is one. Dan Yates in the mini gardens also sits on our design committee. Uh, so the type of trees that we're going after are uh, urban street trees that are salt resistant and calm. They're kind of think of them as growing like a champagne glass of what you see in the past seven plantings on Lloyd Avenue. Uh, the issue from the past where a lot of these trees uh, arguably were not street trees uh, or were planted in a depression that was way too small, could not take enough rainwater, uh, they basically would die out or buckle the sidewalks. The ones we're planting, it's impossible to buckle <coughs> the sidewalks because of their root structure. So um, you know, we're basically going back and correcting it. Uh, and they're clean too they don't have crab apples falling and you know so forth so um, 3a is the uh, post office so uh, those shrubs there have or they were growing out of control it was actually kind of hard for uh, even someone in a wheelchair to get through the sidewalk there we uh, removed those uh, with help of Adelphi volunteers and then uh, I was actually contacted by a lady whose daughter passed away uh, she used to love downtown Latrobe and she's wanted to do something with the bench so she uh, bought one of our Keystone benches, uh, put her daughter's name on it, it just arrived. And then we went and uh, we were blessed to raise uh, about $8,500 and get the blessing from the post office. 
uh, to put in a creative placemaking project, which is to receive the $2,000 grant. Uh, we should start in March there. So the tentative uh, blueprint is on the top right of 3A. Uh, but again, this is a creative placemaking project. There's gonna be a nice soft scape, permanent bench, uh, impossible to steal, to be dead bolted into the ground with uh, concrete anchors. Uh, it's gonna face Rogers Park. Working with Jill on this one in here, and actually initially recommended the bench face this way, uh, which is nice because the improvements to Rogers Park that'll be coming next year uh, with a historical marker that we secured, I think about a year ago for Fred, uh, is gonna be coming into the park too. So it's front facing there. So that's that project. Uh, 4A is the uh, Grubbin Pub, which burned down. Um, we were uh, fortunate to receive a competitive grant for 25, thousand dollars through revitalize in uh, Westmoreland uh, previously we had a thirteen thousand dollar grant to secure the walls uh, and uh, that was well received by Francesca's catering because uh, that's the side of her business uh, the design elements are not completed they're in their final stage but um, if you look at the right of 4b uh, one of the elements is capturing um, you know our story history so uh, this has been done in other cities where they uh, basically take those historical features off their town. We have so many in addition to the buildings and kind of put those exterior lights to um, capture that and you know as you're walking past you can read and so forth. Uh, 5A was a lot project we wrapped up last year. Uh, we're staying on top of it. Those are actually my daughters volunteering. That's what happens when they get in trouble. Um, but uh, that was about a $9,000 project uh, that was pulled off again with no taxpayer money. Uh, all in kind and um, mini gardeners and um, that's next to the liquor store and the gun store on Depot. Uh, 5B, working with Wayne uh, on the curb cuts. Uh, we're looking at design with Gibson Thomas to replace the ones that have issues. Uh, 5C, that's actually Bazilla Concrete. Uh, I work with John Bazilla, the owner, on a couple projects. Uh, that's actually WCCC, just the plug. I don't think they're gonna get LEED certified, but it's basically a LEED certified building without the actual stamp. So they've got a bunch of the bells and whistles uh, for the highest standards of their building. That's actually pervious concrete. If you look, if you're coming depot at the intersection to get back onto Lloyd on the right there, uh, actually, as you're coming up to the depot on the right, that's to the right of the entrance, sort of. That's all pervious concrete, so the rainwater goes through it. Uh, there's so many things in that building um, that are exciting on, on that end. So and I think they're opening up in a few months, maybe. A <laughs> um, couple more here. 6A, uh, our promotions committee was traditionally in the past through the other directors focused on events. Uh, we're, we're changing that a bit. Uh, some of the events I'll get into have been delegated to other organizations. They're still going to happen. They're still going to grow. But 6A is just um, a way of promoting our downtown merchants and a culture of shopping local. The image to the right talks about the dollar spent. This is not an anti Route 30 or an anti mall. It's simply saying that uh, big box stores, uh, if you spend a dollar, 80 cents to that dollar tends to leave town. When you shop local on locally owned businesses, uh, uh, 45 cents uh, to that dollar stays locally. So it's almost like every 50 cents you spend, 50 cents stays and is reinvested locally. Okay, so um, we're sensitive that you can't get everything downtown, but what we're trying to say is, you know, in addition to your normal spending habits, Try coming downtown, uh, and plus there's a lot of differentiated products you can't actually get, um, I think, on a lot of those stores out there. So, um, seven eight uh, is the street furniture we've been issuing uh, for a couple of years now. It's been going good. Uh, we also have been working with Joe um, and uh, Wayne on uh, some new sign improvements. Uh, you have the uh, fully PennDOT compliant uh, street signs with the trolley on them. Um, they are high intensity, uh, and we're working with um, Scott Siegel, Special Light. He actually is here in Latrobe and Derry, and they outfitted the um, Arlington National Cemetery and uh, cities throughout the country, basically, of redoing their streetscape and their street signs to make them nicer and more durable. So this is a fully PennDOT compliant breakaway design. We haven't implemented it yet. We're still in the planning phase. So um, 8A is uh, just a snapshot of our base mapping for the St. Vincent to Latrobe Trail. We've got a new committee um, dedicated now um, a bunch of almost all new fresh faces on the committee which actually formed a board of directors so we got a lot done in the past five months I, I'd almost say we got more done in the past five months than in, in a couple of years so that's exciting um, a lot of those hurdles uh, are out of the way so um, 8b is the Lincoln Avenue trail on Greenway um, I'm not the project lead for this uh, but I will say um, it's a complete streets design which is different than your typical trail so this trail 
uh, is not going to be just a straight shot. It, it can meander a little bit. Uh, the real estate agents I've spoken with and the county planning professional have talked about an increase in property values from 8 to 15 percent on all the properties that intersect from 981 to 982, which is <coughs> massive. Okay, that's almost like a, you know, that's a secondary effect. The first, of course, is the recreational use. But what we saw from the storm, that was a hidden blessing because that helped give, right, everybody new siding and roofs. But a trail like this can help with stormwater management from the trees that we're gonna put in there. Uh, and actually the complete streets component is traffic calming. So if you go to Montana, the speed limit's a lot higher. Why? Because you don't have anything on either side. You're psychologically more apt to drive faster when there isn't something hugging you. So when you have scape, um, that we're talking about, it helps you slow down. Um, so. I just wanted to add one comment. Um, I, I think in Mar at the March meeting, um, I've asked that some um, people come and talk a little bit more detail about the um, Lincoln Avenue Trail, because I think we'll have designs done by then. Yeah, Rich, Rich Rosso is working with Jeannie uh, and the committee on that. I, I think Rich is planning on coming to show <coughs> council the tentative plans um, of the Lincoln Avenue Trail, which is looking, I think, great for out this summer. But again, Rich, I defer those questions to Rich and Jeannie. Uh, so it's going to coincide with the uh, deck hockey um, updates. Uh, okay, 9A. Uh, that's the top part of 9A is the study uh, that was finished in 2006 uh, for completing Lloyd Avenue. Uh, as you know, Lloyd Avenue has come a long way, it still has a long way to go, but starting to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, 4.65 million has been spent on Lloyd Avenue since 2001. Uh, that is substantial. From the removal of telephone poles to, to demoing the blighted homes, there's a couple more still, but most of them are out. Um, putting single post pedestrian lighting uh, in street trees and previous concrete. So we're pretty far. Obviously there's some technical things. You cannot just move telephone pole. You need, full, you need the permission of the landowner. So, uh, we're close. Uh, we have about 6,500 right now we've raised. Uh, huge thanks to the Trojan Industrial Development Authority who gave us 5,000. And we have another grant we're waiting to hear in a few weeks if we got it. Uh, once that's matched, we'll implement uh, April, May, you know, on this next phase. So that next phase is near Dunkin' Donuts. Um, we are looking at installing single baluster lighting, at, which is already there. Uh, Long-term removal of telephone poles into the alley and then street treeing both sides. And as you can see too, there's an inconsistency in the trees there. Some are massive and they're buckling the sidewalk. We would pay fully for all of this um, to remove those trees with landowner's own, uh, permission <clears throat> and then plant a the smaller one, as you see basically from country farms to um, dump donuts, if that makes sense. So, last slide. Okay, uh, 10A, uh, we had presented, um, Wayne and I and, and a few others, we presented at the a parking authority meeting uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we've been planning this ever since I was working in City Hall with Ann and we look out the window and talk about the possibility of a mural against that wall and making improvements. Uh, Tom Hilton, um, who came here, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning speaker. He talked about save our land, and save our towns. This concept was done in a bunch of other cities. So we said, okay, kids, this possible. We looked at where the lines were and everything else. So uh, we met with the parking authority in June. Uh, we took their feedback. We came back to the drawing board. Uh, and presented again and they approved it unanimously. Uh, what it's gonna look like is, uh, none of that's there right now. The only thing that's in this lot is basically that, that one light in the middle. That one light in the middle is fitting for a car dealership or a mall, right, the style. So we're looking to put in those single baluster pedestrian lighting, um, especially with WCCC opening, we're gonna think it's gonna add safety, it's gonna be nicer, and then two trees in the middle, <clears throat> and then possibly, this isn't confirmed, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, planters. Like you see, I say around town from the art center and so forth. Uh, and again, that's all on us. The mini gardener group uh, maintains all of that. I think they do a pretty good job. Uh, there's boxes right there now of wood. Those will be removed, and these are a bit nicer. And then finally, at the bottom, um, uh, we're going to start our uh, garden plot soon. So that's good. Uh, the farmers market. Uh, we set a record last year with uh, the amount of people coming to the farmers market and with the amount of vendors. So that's good news. In light of that, uh, I'm doing an assessment right now with the current uh, vendors to see if they'd be willing to stay longer. Um, and I'm hopeful that works out, because they're the ones that have to stay longer. I can say all I want, hey, you should stay till night, but uh, it's gonna look like a good chance we're gonna stay open until five to catch a later crowd. Research shows that actually like 4.30 to seven is the prime shopping hour, you know, countrywide. That's when people shop the most. 
Uh, and so, you know, the farmer's market has been this busy during the lunch hour and consistently through. Now we're kind of trying to open up to catch that going on crowd. Um, <clears> the <throat> okay, Autumn Fest is still going to be house under us. The Steelers Fest and the Banana Split Festival. Um, two huge events. Now I, I, you know, we're really busy as an organization. We're looking to focus more on community development. Uh, as far as I know, the Steelers okayed that event happening uh, again, and the Banana Split Festival is in the Chamber's hands, uh, which that means is if something goes wrong, it's, it's their fault, not mine. <laughs> uh, but we're excited it's still going to happen, um, you know, and so uh, for all your questions to, to David and Alan. And then finally, the middle, um, the middle map, I, I put these all together this morning, uh, but the middle map I saw this, this is our comprehensive plan in 2010. We used to have them floating around here. That just shows our core area. Um, if you look at each of those buildings, not everyone, about 80% of those um, have had a lot of positive traction um, since the comp plan ended in 2010. So um, our angle is historical preservation, uh, and when that's impossible, then you know other options have to be met. But um, it's just a nice snapshot. So thank you, Jared. Does anybody have any questions for Jared? Anything you want to know about what's going on? Okay. Thank you, Jared. I don't think any. I don't think we have anything else on any other boards and authorities at this point. Um, department reports, Mr. Bush. Nothing at this time. Uh, Chief Boomer. Uh, just what I uh, said earlier. Chief Brazilli. Okay. Anne. I have nothing. Mr. Kelly. I have a few. Things. <laughs> First item appears under the administration and finance department, and it is an ordinance, and I will highlight it. <coughs> it is ordinance number 2015 uh, blank amending section 3-48 of chapter 3 of the administrative code fee schedules uh, specifically schedule a miscellaneous fees and costs and whereas uh, the city of Latrobe uh, charges certain fees and costs for administrative and non-administrative purposes which are set forth in various provisions of the code of ordinances whereas council desires to uh, amend or increase various fees uh, set forth in the administrative code now therefore be resolved section one uh, that uh, chapter three section 348 fee schedules uh, is amended uh, to add the following and the following and I'll just outline them are fees for the use of the informational sign that we have in front of the building uh, for uh, government related uh, agencies such as the city uh, Adams Library, the uh, Park and Recreation uh, Commission, and the Latrobe Fire uh, Companies, there will be no charge for usage at this time. The second category would be mutual aid, ambulance, and the school district. Uh, one week, uh, the fee is $50, two weeks it's $75. Anything longer uh, would be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. Category three is for nonprofits <coughs> and civic groups, foundations, and faith-based organizations. Again, $50 for the first week. $75 for the second week with longer terms to be determined on a case-by-case uh, uh, -case basis. Category four is uh, for-profit entities. Uh, the first week is $300, the second week is $550, and then personal messages, birthdays, and things of that nature. Uh, for one week, the fee would be $50. Uh, section two recites that any and all other ordinances or resolutions inconsistent herewith are hereby repealed. Uh, section 3 says that all other provisions of the Code of Ordinances not specifically repealed uh, shall remain in full force and effect. Section 4 uh, authorizes the Mayor, City Manager, City Secretary, and any other proper officer to take all steps and to sign any and all documents necessary to carry into effect this ordinance. Section 5 states that the ordinance shall become effective upon the date of post enactment publication of notice of passage of the same. Enacted uh, this date, the motion would be to enact the ordinance as outlined by the solicitor. May I have a motion to enact the or ordinance as outlined by the solicitor? I'll make that motion. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Any questions or discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Um, category four, personal messages. Fee for one week, 300, but then below it says for personal messages, fee for one week, $50. What's the difference? You know the, new one? <coughs> the difference the difference is the the weekly rate above is for profit organizations. 
a business. Uh, just an example, I know the black and gold restroom is asked to have, a, have something on a sign. That would be that fee. But personal messages would be you wanting to wish your granddaughter a happy birthday for a week and they're going to appear on the sign. That's the difference. Any other questions? Ms. Buck? This is Ordinance 2015-4. Mr. Baldwin. Yes. Mr. Gibbonangelo. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Ms. Beasy. Yes. Mayor Wolfman. Yes. Those five, yes. Madam Mayor, members of council, next item is a, a simple motion. I'm going to read it and then just to offer an explanation. The motion reads, I move we authorize the city manager to take all action and sign any and all documents necessary to implement the lowest bid for the supply of electric energy to city metered and unmetered accounts, and I should add to this motion, and for street lighting accounts, uh, which will result in a savings to the city. Our city manager has received quotes and he needs to go over them to determine uh, which would offer us the most savings. However, these quotes require an immediate response in order to preserve them. So what we're asking for council today is to authorize the city manager to review the quotes, pick the one that offers the greatest savings for the city, and then to go ahead and enter into the agreement. And what I would then have is a resolution at the next meeting ratifying the actions of the city manager. So we have to move one. That's why we have this motion here for this evening. May I have a motion to um, as outlined, advise, as outlined by the solicitor? I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second, please. I'll second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The, the next item that I have uh, <clears throat> is a resolution uh, a while back and we Oh, we'll be on tape. Uh, we hadn't uh, uh, done this yet, but we need to uh, entertain a resolution appointing a tax uh, collection committee delegate or delegates pursuant to the local earned income tax. And uh, the resolution reads as follows. Now, therefore, be it resolved, section one, that the city does hereby appoint the following individuals as its tax collection committee delegates. Uh, a, the primary voting delegate will, uh, will be the individual holding the office of city manager, namely Wayne B. Jones. B, the first alternate voting delegate will be the person holding the office of the mayor of the city of Latrobe, namely Rosemary M. Wolfen. C, the second alternate voting delegate will be the person holding the office of deputy mayor of the city of Latrobe, namely Mike Scaporo. And section two reads that it's, if, any, if the primary voting delegate cannot be present at the meeting, the first alternate voting delegate will be the representative of the city. If both the primary and second delegates cannot attend uh, the TCC meeting, then the second alternate voting delegate shall represent the city. Uh, these appointments are effective immediately and shall continue until successors are appointed. Uh, all other resolutions uh, inconsistent herewith are hereby repealed, resolved, in council this date. The motion would be to adopt the resolution as outlined by the solicitor. May I have a motion to adopt the resolution as outlined by the solicitor? I'll make that motion. May I have a second, please? I'll second that. Any questions? I have one. Can you explain a little bit about what this is so people understand? Yeah, the uh, TCC is the Tax Collection Committee. They oversee, uh, with the change in the uh, act recently in the state, I guess a couple years ago now, um, there's one tax collector that collects taxes for the entire county, and the TCC <coughs> Committee oversees that to make sure that they're being audited properly and that they're doing their job. That, that tax collector is Burke Conger, by the way. And we've had this committee before. You're just naming it. Yes, we did. And um, it was our previous city managers. Uh, and I think the mayor was, was still the first alternate and the second mayor of the second alternate. That hasn't changed. Second mayor? <laughs> the mayor is the second alternate, yes. Deputy mayor. OK. Any other questions? Ms. Buck, this is a resolution. This is resolution 2015-5. Ms. Beaton. Yes. Mr. Gibbon Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. 
Mr. Bob Mayor. Yes. Mayor Wolford. Yes. Uh, the last item I have uh, for an action item, Madam Mayor, members of Council, is under the Planning and Development <coughs> Department. Uh, I will read it. It is a resolution. <coughs> it's entitled uh, Reapproving a Subdivision Request by Edward E. Carfang and Annette Carol Car Carfang. Now, therefore, be it resolved, Section 1, that the subdivision requested by Edward T. Carfang and Annette Carol Carfang applicants, according to the plans and specifications submitted in 1998, to the Latrobe Planning Commission being the same, is hereby approved non pro tonque, which means now for then. Section two, that the mayor and city secretary being are hereby authorized and directed to execute any and all documents necessary to carry into effect this resolution resolved in council this date. By way of explanation, uh, in 1998, Mr. and Mrs. Carfang did in fact submit an application for a subdivision. They own properties over near the Loposki Automobile lot on, on Lincoln Avenue. Uh, it is a single property with three homes on it, three smaller homes. They then sought a subdivision that would split the property into two properties, one containing one house, the other containing two homes. That uh, approval was granted by the Planning Commission and was in fact granted by City Council. We passed a resolution then. The laws, both our, our local and state laws, require a person who obtains a subdivision to record that subdivision at the recorder of deeds office within 90 days after the final approval. This was not done. And there, while there is no penalty, they cannot record their subdivision because it's well beyond, obviously, the 90 days. So the request has been made to council if they would consider kindly reapproving uh, this subdivision so Mr. and Mrs. Carfang can go ahead and record it. And that's the reason for the resolution on the agenda this evening. May I have a motion to off, um, adopt, the adopt the resolution as read by the solicitor? I'll make that motion. May I have a second, please? I'll second it. Any questions or discussion? Ms. Buck? This is resolution 2015 6. Mr. Jim Yes. Ms. Beasy? Yes. Mr. Baldwin? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mayor Wolf? Yes. Curtis Bob? Yes. I have nothing further, Mayor. Uh, under unfinished business, um, I have a letter here from FEMA. I don't know if you got a copy of it or not, but basically it's the approval of the hazardous mitigation plan that we submitted. Um, and it says the hazardous mitigation plan for your community has been approved by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and your community is now eligible to apply for federal disaster assistance until the plan expires as stated above. So I think Skip worked on that and, and you, I'm not sure who all was involved in that, but it's approved and nice work to all those involved. Um, I, I also under unfinished business, I wanna make an appointment to the law, to the uh, Latrobe Municipal Authority. I'm gonna um, appoint uh, Mr. Don Clare. Mr. Kelly. <laughs> Somewhere I have a resolution, Madam Mayor, I just have to get The resolution would read appointing member to the Latrobe Municipal Authority. Now, therefore, be it resolved. Section 1 that Donald Clare being is hereby appointed as a member of the Latrobe Municipal Authority, said term to expire on January 31, 2020. Uh, resolved in council of the state, the motion would be to adopt the resolution as read by the solicitor. May I have a motion to adopt the resolution? I'll make that motion. May I have a second, please? I'll second it. Any questions or discussion? Ms. Buck? This is resolution 2015-7. Ms. Beasy? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Baldinari? Yes. Mr. Givenangelo? No. Mayor Wolfer? Yes. But it's four yes, one no. Anyone have any, anyone have any new business on council at this time? Wayne? Mr. Kelly? 
Uh, no, no Madam Mayor. At this time, we have uh, our open forum citizens' requests. Anybody in, uh, from the audience wish to say anything, anything on your mind, anything you want to talk about? Please step to the microphone and state your name and address. My name is Paul Hook, 121 West Tacoma Avenue, Patrol. Uh, <clears throat> it's a very detailed uh, explanation of the revitalization. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I wonder if uh, the council or the uh, revitalization committee could speak to the railroad concerning the conditions of the three underpasses, Jefferson Street, Bigginer Street, and Alexandria Street. Um, the artwork on those three bridges is really looking shabby, rusty, and if, um, I guess it's Aurora's responsibility, I don't know, they could sandblast that metal and get a nice bright coat of paint on it, would really be an improvement. So I don't know who's authority that would be. Jared? Um, yeah, no, that's, that's a good, uh, that's a really good idea. Uh, actually, four years ago, we had uh, contacted uh, the railroad, and I had actually lined up. We raised about fifteen hundred dollars, and then we actually lined up contractors who were going to do it uh, as a donation. Uh, their work, we were just going to pay for the supplies. Uh, I think they wanted uh, around four million dollars worth of insurance um, from the volunteers to paint it. Um, I tried to explain uh, through the course of several months that that. You know is arguably unreasonable because they're not on the railroad they're on the street um right so um you know and they were going to be painted back to the historical colors of the pennsylvania railroad so you had those maroon greenish type of gold colors um uh, i don't think it's something that cannot happen and you know perhaps it's revisited i know there's some new contacts um you know in norfolk southern locally at least but it it has at the time it went all the way to the <coughs> national headquarters uh, the request and uh, the we were really close to implementing but the issue was the cost to get that type of insurance um, was prohibited now doesn't mean it can't happen though but I agree it's in really bad shape uh, the some of the concrete's falling off I, I wouldn't know about the zoning requirements but we were just trying to fix it I know there have been new lighting put in uh, I think but, um, well my, we my way of thinking it. was uh, to address those three areas up. <coughs> Excuse me again, please. Um, but anyway, uh, I thank you for the uh, input that you have given us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Is that the city's responsibility then? Or the it's railroad? Really, I, no, I think it's the, it's the railroad. Um, it's my understanding now, I try to explain the, the, how bad of shape it was. Um, now there's there's both metal beams, okay, and then there's the concrete sort of balusters surrounding it. Those are in really bad shape. So, um, Madam Mayor, I, as, as I recall, <coughs> maybe Joe can help help me with my memory. We did enter into an agreement with Norfolk Southern, but that was only regarding the lighting. Only regarding the lighting. We did not agree to any further. <coughs> we have agreed to maintain the lighting underneath the underpass. Forever. It's our, our responsibility. Yeah, they, they put it up, Joe, and we were supposed to take care of it then, right? Correct. But not not the painting or yeah. or anything dealing with the underpass. It's just specifically structure. just the lighting. So the lighting. Joe, did they require the same money as far as no insurance? It, no, what it is is they they did in house. They did all the light and all the work. So they didn't require, require the extra insurance. Right, right. And they're not requiring anything of us to win and replace a light or a, a ball. It just seems like an awful lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. Um, I, I can't remember the exact amount of millions um, that was required, but even that isn't impossible. Again, you know, it's not like you, know, you basically you can tweak your liability coverage and your blanket insurance. Well, one thing it's we we could look into is whether or not <coughs> the condition of the underpass is creating a, a safety hazard because if it is i think a polite letter to the puc might get some things moving but it has to be in, in terms of some sort of safety hazard so i guess that's the first question 
is it deteriorating without the paint and becoming a safety hazard? But uh, you see Mike might get involved. There are no structural issues, are there? <coughs> I haven't heard any discussed. Okay, it's fine. Anyone else? I didn't want to say um, sure. anybody that is interested in having something on the sign, there are forms to fill out and then they get turned into the city manager and uh, then as soon as we can get them put on the sign. But they will be available at the administration office at the window and we'll get them put on the website in a couple days. Anyone else? Anything else? I would like and I will try to make it a five minute executive session, maybe seven, but <laughs> um, city manager's report. Nothing at this time. Now as for the mayor's report, I just encourage everyone to comment and um, on May on March second, um, for the um, yeah, neighborhood watch. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do too many things one time. Neighborhood watch um, and help Jerry and the group get all these things bagged and, and ready to go to the residence doors. Um, anyone else? That's it. That's it. Then meeting is adjourned. Oh, to, wait a minute. I, I'm sorry. Can we adjourn and then go to executive session? Or do I have to uh, go to executive session and then adjourn? The next meeting. We can announce it now. It's, it's been All right. Well, I can adjourn now. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going into an executive session to discuss matters of litigation. Matters of litigation. <laughs>